Hi folks, G3 here, and welcome to another installment of my journey to go green. Well folks, thanks for watching this video. If you enjoy it, then please remember to click the like button. And also, if you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon so you get notified when I load up a new video. Right, let's get on with the video. Today's episode is about my car being poorly sick and its visit back to Tesla servicing. This car is not my car. It's a loan one from Tesla while mine is being serviced. So I'm going to cover the story on my journey to go and pick my car back up after it's been repaired. So I'll give you a, a little bit of the, the journey. You'll be able to see what's going on and I'll talk you through what's happened. So let's get on with the story. OK, let me give you a little bit of background. Last week, I believe it was a week today on Wednesday, I'd been out with Mrs G3. We'd come back and there wasn't parking available at the house. So we'd had to park a little bit away down a hill and I'd pulled in there, reversed back and, and pulled onto the pavement to get off of the road because there was ample space there and I was um, tucked in behind another car. But I needed to position myself a little bit more. So I went to put the car in reverse and it didn't engage. It just started rolling forward when I pressed, started pressing the, um, the pedal to reverse. And I was inching closer and closer to the car in front of me. So I put the brakes on tried again, no success, and I kept inching closer to the car in front. I was sort of initially a couple of foot away, but then it was down to 18 inches and I was close to the wall besides me because each time that I put the, um, the brake on and then shifted into reverse and went to start um, going into reverse and pressing the pedal, it then started rolling forward. So I shut the car down for the night, put the cover on, left it where it was. It wasn't ideal because it was a little bit close to the to the wall so I was concerned about people getting past it and scratching it as they went past but I had to leave it there and left it for the night and I thought the next morning I would go and try again. I'd also try doing a soft reboot um, which I have shown in another video and I'll include a link here to the soft reboot and how I used it to correct um, an issue with Spotify and I thought I'd try that and if there was a problem then I'd call support. So I did that the next day. I was supposed to be working um, so fortunately I had a bit of time before starting work. I nipped down to look at the car and to try that. It hadn't resolved. This issue was still there. It was creeping forward. Um, I, when I, I, put the, um, I put the brake on, I put it into reverse and then um, press to reverse and it would just start rolling forward. And by this time I was getting even closer to the, the car in front. It was getting nearer to 12 inches away from it and nearer to the wall. I tried a soft reboot. So that's both scroll wheels um, uh, with the foot on the brake and for a, a second or two and that would do a reset. And that reset but didn't make any difference whatsoever. So I contacted support. Oh, that took an age. Um, it was approximately 30 minutes of being on hold before I got through to support. And this was round about, I think it was about 8.30 in the morning um, when I had uh, tried initially. Um, and it was on hold, so I, I I gave up waiting in the car. I went back to um, home because I'm working from home and I was able to start work. I left the um, phone on um, on speaker while I was waiting and then when the support person got in touch with me, I then went back to the car and um, allowed her to guide me through a few bits and pieces. So we talked about the soft reset and then there was another option to power off within the car itself. 
So within the menu options, I could power the car down and then um, try it again, powering it back on and, and giving that a go, and, and it made no difference. So the support technician then um, went away to speak to somebody, needed to cover a few bits and pieces, try and work out something else. It wasn't able to be resolved. So they were extremely good and said that they would send out somebody to pick the car up and they would arrange for me to have a replacement in the meantime. So I locked the car up, went back to work and then it was a really busy day with work and uh, so yeah, lots of these things happening were, was a bit um, tricky to try and manage. They phoned back pretty much straight away or um, to let me know that um, the recovery company would be out uh, within the next two hours they were going to come out to pick the car up and equally I had a call from um, Enterprise Rental to arrange a rental car to cover me in the meantime and that was an interesting call it was my local branch in Dover and she was um, very understanding and was aware that it was an electric vehicle and so she was trying to find the best vehicle for me considering my other car was electric so would I be happy with a diesel car no would I be happy with a unleaded car uh, no uh, because apparently the um, the premium cars they had were things like Mercedes um, I, I think it was a Range Rover or, or something like that and I I advised her that I really didn't care about a premium car, I cared about it being an electric car and I really didn't mind what it was that I had, you know, it, it could be anything, it could be uh, um, a Nissan Leaf, Renault Zoe, it, it didn't need to be a premium model car, it just needs to be an electric car, I mean that's the thing that um, that, that drives us all with these, isn't it, it's, it's that we want an electric vehicle, um, any of the additional bells, whistles and niceties, yeah, fantastic, wonderful, they're lovely, but the key driver behind all of this is that we want to be an electric car and we're not going to be using a, a combustion engine. Um, so she said that um, uh, she would uh, see what could be arranged and get back to me. And fairly swiftly I got contacted by the exotic department at Enterprise Rental. I, I wasn't aware that this car was exotic. Um, I, I was expecting it to be delivered with um, uh, palm trees and pina colada and um, and all the rest of it but apparently it's their exotic department um, and they were going to arrange for me to have another car delivered um, it wouldn't be that day which was fine because I wasn't going to be going out and about it wasn't a problem um, but th the next day in the morning they would bring me out an equivalent car which was fantastic so that was all fine and dandy and then that same morning I then had the recovery driver um, turn up at the car and he had a fantastic bit of kit it was a, um, a, a lorry that had a um, rather intricate grab handle uh, that was <laughs> clearly strong enough to cope with a car that um, is uh, approaching several tons and the, it was a windy day and I was very concerned that there might be a bit of a pendulum effect and that my Tesla was going to be swinging into the car that it was parked very near to, the wall that it was near to and that there were going to be a whole host of issues. And he put my mind at ease, he got the car ready by putting these um, protected brackets onto the wheels they had lots of padding to make sure that the alloys were protected and that the bodywork was okay so he spent a bit of time um, fixing those onto each of the wheels he then brought the lorry alongside uh, we had to hold the traffic up a little bit um, for a very short period of time he connected it and then very skillfully worked at winching the car up ensuring that um, it was relatively stable, that it wasn't flapping around in the wind and he then 
managed to get it so that it was about to be loaded onto the back of the lorry and carefully down. It was a brilliant job. He did extremely well. I was very impressed. There was no um, issue with it being caught in the wind or getting near the, 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 the other car and the wall and he appeared to take great care with the vehicle so I was extremely impressed. It was then ratcheted into, into place to ensure that it wouldn't move. Um, he moved the um, lorry once it was mostly secure so that the traffic could get past which I thought was really thoughtful and he then continued to lock it into place and the final touch was that I needed to um, stand by the vehicle with my thumb up which was uh, he then took a photo and that was their way of getting um, approval that I was happy with the loading process because obviously in the Covid situation it couldn't be signed so he had to go through that process of getting a photo of me doing that. He then went um, on his merry way and I went back to work for the day. The next day at um, I think it was 11 in the morning I had a text message to warn me of, of um, impending arrival and then um, Ranj from Enterprise Exotics turned up with the, the Tesla. It was a two-year-old 100D so a more um, a bigger um, capacity battery and also it was a dual motor so motor front and um, and rear so it would be uh, four-wheel drive or all-wheel drive as they say um, and it would be a little bit faster as well I believe um, compared to my 80 um, single motor rear-wheel drive he took me around the car, took photos, took video to make sure that um, there was a record of the chips and, and scrapes and, and there were a few on it and he was very good at documenting all of those and the um, rash on the alloys which seems to be a, a constant thing with um, Teslas being um, burned on curbs and um, gave me a brief overview of the car, asked um, if they had any questions and I, I had one or two about um, what I needed to do with regards to the account to, to log on and, and use um, and that sort of thing. But one question I forgot to ask and he um, forgot to tell me was with regards to charging and what happened, what would happen with the supercharger network. I subsequently found out by going, uh, doing a bit of research and going on the Enterprise Exotic website. It took a little bit to try and locate it. It wasn't clear and obvious, but I tried to find out whether it had supercharging capacity included as part of the agreement, and it did. The agreement came with free supercharging, so I was able just to um, rock up, use the superchargers, and it was all taken care of. I didn't have to pay anything. I didn't use any other charging network during my time, so I, I wasn't aware as to what cables were and connections were in there, but I did use the um, superchargers once and um, those were fine. So Ranch took me around the car and it was very convenient for him in that he had a pickup in the same road as me and, and seeing as I live on the outskirts of Dover, that was a bit of a surprise that there was another one locally, so that worked out well for him. So I had the car and I didn't need to use it straight away but the pickup was fine. So that was great. It was a white 100D and it was a couple of years old. I got to use that car a little bit um, going out and about and it was um, very nice, very comfortable. I was extremely nervous because it had a thousand pounds excess uh, as part of the agreement. So although if there was a, a non-fault accident that it would be hopefully contested and, and reclaimed, but obviously I had the £1,000 excess hanging over my head, which was a bit concerning. So we made sure that we didn't go too far and wide, but it, the journey was fine. The car was very pleasant, so it was all right. 100D, it was a little bit faster. We did go out and about a bit. It was noticeably that, that, that little bit faster, which was nice. 
and equally had a, a higher range. I think my 80 is uh, quoted at around about 240 miles uh, maximum in all you know good conditions and I think the 100 looked to be around about 300 miles range in um, all conditions from what I could see so that was um, that was quite good the within a day or two so this would have been now let me work out when it was Monday so Monday the 15th of March um, so after the weekend where they'd had my car um, and hopefully had been able to resolve it the Monday they called me up Tesla servicing in Dartford and said uh, they've actually got one of their own cars for me now to use could I bring the hire car back because it costs them I don't know whether it's a hundred pound a day it must be more than that surely um, it, it cost them a bit of money every day and they wanted to swap it out for one of their own cars which was quite a surprise to me and a complete inconvenience because I live over 60 miles away from Tesla Dartford it's an hour and quarter journey for me each way so two and a half hours round trip and 125 miles total and they wanted me to bring back the car on what is a working day I did actually happen to have the day off because it was a week that I had off because my birthday fell during that week but they wanted me to bring it back and that was a complete inconvenience. If I had known that from the start, I would have said to them when they were making the arrangements, don't worry about getting me a hire car and just wait until you've got a car spare if you can get it to me. If you can't, then, then don't worry. We've got another car in the family. We can, you know, we can cope. I really don't want the inconvenience of having to do a two and a half hour round trip, 125 miles total, and bring a car back to you to pick up one of yours. It's really not, it's really not good customer service. I know from, from the off, it was great they wanted me to have a car straight away and I wasn't inconvenienced. That's brilliant, I get that. But if there'd been some sort of communication from them saying, we'll get you a car, but we would want it back and swapped out for one of ours as soon as it's available, we could have had that early conversation where I say, well, actually, that's not going to be convenient. You're not just around the corner from me. It's not a quick pop, and I don't want that. I would much rather we have an arrangement where I might have to wait a day or two and you could perhaps deliver that car to me, and that's it. That's great. But instead, Mrs. G3 and I had a day trip to Tesla Dartford to drop the car off the hire car back at their depot which was fine we did that um, obviously it's still during um, covid lockdown so there were security measures in place we were able to get into the building and use the um, restroom facilities and have a coffee um, because they had distancing in place we had our masks on and because it was a service um, drop-off so we were able to do that we picked up a car from them which is the one that I'm currently driving, and that is an 80D. So the capacity of this when it's full appears to be around about 200 miles. So about 40 miles less than my 85, from what I could see. And this car um, was quite different from ours. A few things that we didn't like. We didn't like the um, color, color of the leather seats, the brown leather, we didn't like the um, wooden trim that's used on the dash. This trim here, it really doesn't, um, yeah, it doesn't look nice to, to us. We weren't so keen on that. I'm not keen on the, like the velour that's used on the dash here because it seems to be a bit of a magnet for, for dirt and dust from what I could see. So it made me really happy with the selection that we had for the cars, but I appreciate it. You know, it's not everyone's taste. The, it's great that they've got the various different combinations you can have, the five different colours, the however many different types of wood, the, um, the different types of leather, so that's fantastic. But we realised after having being able to drive three different cars in the space of a week using different options, different sizes, we realised that the one we had we were very happy with. So this car at the moment, I am driving it back 
It is a Wednesday, so Wednesday the 17th of March. Fortunately, I am off again today. It was my 50th birthday yesterday, um, and so I've taken the whole week off, even though I can't really do a huge amount to celebrate during lockdown. Uh, I spent the day um, with Mrs. G3 and also doing some uh, online gaming with my family, and we had a nice, nice time uh, and were able to celebrate as, as much as we possibly could or commiserate the fact that I'm now 50. Um, but fortunately, I've got this week off, so I have time to travel and take the car back up to Tesla Dartford. And I am going to see what has occurred with my car. The, the, I'm going to have a word with the technician and find out what it is. And I'll be able to cover that on the, the video in a moment on my way back and explain what's going on. But my understanding from the service representative that I spoke to on Monday was that after checking the logs and, and looking through, they believe that it was nothing more than user error and that I wasn't pressing the brake hard enough potentially before then engaging reverse or, or something along those lines. I need to speak to them and find out exactly what it was. I'm fairly convinced that I was following the process and that it just wasn't engaging correctly. I stand to be corrected. I am a relatively new driver and I could have made a mistake. I hold my hand up, I could have made a mistake, but from the careful process and diagnostics that I was sort of undergoing at the time, I'm fairly comfortable that I was doing what I should be doing. But we'll see, they've got the logs, they've got the information. Uh, they're the experts, so we'll see. And we'll cover that again um, later. So I'll leave you um, with a little bit of the journey. I'm currently driving um, beyond the M20, uh, sorry, on the M20 beyond Ashford. So this is the stretch from Ashford to Maidstone. And for those that aren't familiar with the area, it's two lanes each way because of um, separating out traffic following Brexit. So the far lanes of the M20 going coastbound are used to control lorries going coastbound. They send the majority of the traffic that's intended for Dover Port, the docks, they send most of that traffic via the A249 and then the A2, M2 to Dover in that direction and the lorries that are separated out and sent on the M20 here are intended for the Channel Tunnel so that's going via the rail link so at um, Junction 8 I believe it is they check the lorries that are attempting to get back onto the M20 to make sure that they've got the right paperwork and that they are eligible to go to the um, Euro Tunnel and so that's what those lorries are there. They're all separated out um, as part of that process, which means they have the inconvenience of dueling um, London bound M20 and coast bound M20 at this point for cars and also lorries that aren't involved with exporting. So the lorries we see going the opposite, opposite direction on the jeweled um, bit of road here are local going for deliveries in Ashford, that kind of thing. All the ones that we're passing at the moment on the far side are heading towards Eurotunnel. So there's a 50 mile an hour restriction in place here. It is um, uh, with cameras um, monitoring average speed across, the, um, across the, the stretch. So this is a pretty good area really for, um, for me to be utilizing um, the um, autopilot um, bits and pieces. So. I am just putting that on now, um, if I get it right. Took me a little bit to, uh, to get used to it. I'm still not quite used to the stalk. So I've got autopilot on now, hands are firmly on the wheel, but it is gonna be steering me and guiding me and keeping me at 50 on this stretch. I found it to be really, um, really useful on here. The white lines are really clear. It can visibly see those with the cameras and it keeps me in the pace so that's fine and dandy we're now on autopilot and it's going to take me the rest of the way okay so i'm at um, tesla dartford and it's a little bit confusing 
because the work that I was expecting to be done hasn't been done. I understood it was in for the EM EMMC upgrade. It was going to be done whilst it was in for the, the work that was being performed with the faulty reverse. And that hasn't been done. The work that they have relates to a battery upgrade. So it's the reseal of the battery because um, there was a recall regarding, apparently there's, there's, there are channels for the battery to breathe, um, to allow air through. And there was concern on the older batteries that dirt could get in there. So this recall was to do with fixing that issue. Um, so that's great, it's been done, but it wasn't what I was expecting. Um, and it wasn't in for the EMMC thing. So that still needs to be done. And yet, my car came in to be worked on earlier than anticipated. I'd had it booked in for a service um, on Monday the 15th of March because it was going to have the EMMC thing done and the rear diffuser that had a scratch on or marking um, when I picked it up um, secondhand. And they were going to work on that. And yet it was brought in earlier because of the reversing issue and service said that they would move those things to also be done at the same time. Well, the EMMC thing hasn't, apparently, according to the, um, the technician that I've just spoken to. I've not looked at one of their invoices before and there's an awful lot of information on here, so I'm not entirely sure what's going on. So I need to double check that, but apparently that upgrade hasn't gone ahead. So I, um, I need to confirm that. But certainly the one relating to the battery has gone ahead. So fine. With regards to the reversing, the technician has talked to me about it and what he was saying was that from the logs they could see, although I'd initiated reverse and started pressing the pedal, it needed to be pressed more to engage fully and fully reverse. So the fact that it was rolling forward was putting me off and it was rolling near the other car. So that's when I was putting the brake on. Even though I was leaving it for, a, for a, what you know felt like a second or two, it was rolling forward, and that was an issue. Because I don't have creep on, apparently, if I had creep initiated, which makes it work in the same way that a regular automatic car would do, so it gives that a little bit of a pull. If I had that initiated, then apparently it would work. You would feel that when you um, you then initiated the reverse, it would start doing the little creep backwards before you put go and push the um, pedal more fully, and it really engages, and that would negate that thing. So that appears to have been it, um, and that appears to have been the issue. And to Tesla's credit, if that was user error, they haven't charged me anything for that process of the hire car, picking the car up and arranging that, those bits and pieces. So that's that's brilliant. I mean, obviously, I'm, I'm not intentionally um, taking the, the piss out of them by doing that kind of thing. That was a, a, a perceived issue, um, which they covered under the warranty bits and pieces, and, and they did a really good service there. So that's it, folks. That's a story about my car going into service because of a reversing issue. Hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, as always, then please click the like button. If you haven't done so already, then please subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon so you get notified when I load up a new video. Well, thanks for watching, folks. Until next time, bye.